Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode in a short series about how I weather my wagons. In this video I'm going to be showing you a simple beginner scheme that can be used on a variety of wagon types. If you're tired of the shiny plastic look of all of your vans and trucks then this is the video for you. Most importantly you don't need an airbrush or any specialist tools. So with that said, let's get started. The wagons we're going to be working on today are these ventilated planked vans from Graham Farish. We have the unweathered item on the right hand side and the look we're going for on the left hand side. As you can see the weathering job we're going for here is pretty simple and pretty subtle. We're just looking to add a little bit of age and colour variation to get away from that fresh off the assembly line look. So let me tell you a little bit about how we're going to achieve this look and the equipment we're going to need. Stage one is we're going to scuff the paint on the wagon using a toothpick. Often the wagons have customer decals or some kind of codes that relate to the wagon itself and we can just distress them slightly by removing some of that paint. Stage two is to apply a brown enamel wash all over the model. Any dark brown color will work here. I'm using one from Ammo. Just make sure it is an enamel wash rather than a water-based one. I'll talk a little bit more about why that's important later on. Stage three is to use some weathering powders. We're going to be using brown for representing dirt and red for representing rust. And then for the fourth and final stage, assuming that your wagon has a roof, like these ventilated vans, then we're just going to add a bit of colour variation to the roof using some oil paints. I mix up a dark grey colour from black and white, but if you have an appropriate dark grey colour oil paint, then that will also work just fine. And in addition to this, you'll obviously need some brushes, you can just use old ones for this because they're going to get damaged pretty quick and we're not doing anything that's particularly precise. And you will need thinners for the oil wash, water, kitchen roll, cotton buds and all that kind of stuff. So with that said, let's look at stage one. So let's begin with stage one, scuffing the paint. Now this wagon doesn't have a huge amount of paint on it, but that doesn't mean we can't achieve an, a nice little effect on the letters that are there. Grabbing the toothpick, I would start quite lightly rubbing it across the painted area and just see what happens. I find some of the paint comes off really easily and some of it requires a little bit more effort to get it to come off. So just start off lightly, pull the toothpick away and inspect what you're doing and make sure you're, that you're not entirely removing the paint. We're just trying to scuff it up and let some of that base colour of the wagon come through just to make it look like the paint has faded and chipped slightly. The key with this whole weathering process is to just take your time. There's no rush and once you're used to the process it won't take much time at all to weather your wagons. The thing with this first stage is it's the only one that isn't reversible. Once you've removed that paint, it's pretty much impossible to get it back on there looking neat unless you go down the rabbit hole of applying your own decals and similar things. So just remove a little bit at a time, check it, make sure you're happy, and if you want to remove more, have another go at it. So once you're done, you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. On a piece of rolling stock like this van which doesn't have much paint, it's a very very subtle process. but. For a large open wagon, for example, which might have a big customer logo on the side, it's actually a really important step and it will help to add a lot of age to your wagon. So now let's look at the enamel wash stage. For this process, any dark brown colour will do. Just make sure you shake the pot up well before you use it because the enamel washes can separate if they're left to sat for a bit of time. We're going to apply it to the sides and the chassis of the model using a medium sized soft brush. And we're going to put it onto the model quite liberally. We don't want it to get to the point where the wash is pooling or dripping, but we need a decent amount on there so that it flows into all the recesses on the piece of rolling stock. 
And once the wash is all over the model, we're going to use a cotton bud to begin removing it from the raised sections of detail. I like to go in up and down strokes where possible because it looks more like the dirt is being washed down the sides of the piece of rolling stock by the rain. And this part of the stage is really why we have to use an enamel wash rather than a water-based wash because the enamel washes dry a lot slower which gives us time to remove them from the raised sections of the model. If we didn't do this then the whole model just becomes very dark and we have less contrast when really what we want is more contrast. A little tip here, if you're finding the wash isn't coming off as much as you'd like or you've applied way too much and you need to remove a drip stain or something like, like that, dampen the cotton bud very lightly in appropriate thinners and then use that to remove the wash and you should be able to pretty much get the model looking exactly as it did before you started. So once you're done, you should have something that looks like this. This wash stage works so well on planked wagons because there's so many fine creases and things like that for it to sink into and it really makes all the individual planks stand out. And also the metal banding running up the sides of the wagon. We can begin to see the individual rivets which are actually molded in there and it really brings out all the detail. So the weathering powder stage, this is where things start to get a little bit messy. You may want to put down some kitchen roll or something like that. I've got this little modeling mat that I'm using and I make sure I wash it after I use weathering powders on anything because otherwise next time you sneeze you make a horrible mess of your desk. So these things are super versatile and can be used to make any number of effects. If you've watched any of my series on making my small ingle nook shunting puzzle layout, you'll know that I use the weathering powders to weather my track, for example. So the great thing about weathering powders is that they're one of the easiest ways we can achieve nice blended effects without using an airbrush. So if, like me, you don't have an airbrush, I'd really recommend experimenting with these. They also have another benefit of providing texture to the model, particularly if you apply them in quite a thick paste-like format. We're not going to be doing that here because it's very easy to make a ginormous mess of what you're doing, but that's another thing to keep in mind. Again, if you've seen my series on my railway build, you'll know that I've used that quite a lot to weather the vehicles on the layout. So we're going to begin with the rust colour. I'm using Track Rust, uh, which is a MIG product. Again, any kind of dark red is going to do you just fine. My thoughts here are that you put the rust underneath the dirt because the rust would come directly from the metal and the dirt is going to fall on top of it. It seems to give me a better effect, so it's what I'm going to stick with. So using a very old and very scabby brush, we are going to apply a little bit of powder at a time. And whilst we're using this rust color, obviously we're not going to put it on the wood. We're just going to keep it on the metal. So around the chassis, around the axles, and maybe a little bit along the kind of metal banding that goes up and down the sides of the wagon. I like to use a small brush for the rust because I don't want it to go everywhere. I just want to have small kind of discrete patches around the model just in the kind of most areas where the water and the dirt would collect, which would begin to corrode the metal. Once that's done, we're going to apply the dirt layer. I'm using Dark Earth from AK, and I'm applying it with a larger, softer brush because I want this effect to be much more subtle. I'm not really trying to make the wagon look like it's muddy. I'm trying to make it look like the dust and the dirt that gets uh, kind of airborne by the wheels just collects on the side of it. So this is a much more subtle effect. I actually apply it to almost the whole model and then again using the cotton bud I come in and remove most of that layer. Again in downward strokes trying to make it look like the dirt is running down the model and that means it's just going to collect in the crevices and not stay on the high points. 
I do find with this stage, most of the time I need to come in with a dampened cotton bud, so I'll remove most of it with a dry cotton bud, and then dampen a cotton bud in the thinners, dry it 50% back off on a paper towel, and then use that to remove more of the weathering powder if I find the effect to be a little bit too overwhelming. If you've only applied a little bit of powder and most of it's coming off, don't worry about the thinners, just use a dry cotton bud and see where you end up. So once you're done with the powder stage, hopefully your wagon will look a little bit like this. It's really starting to show its age and, in my opinion at least, no longer looks like a little piece of plastic. It is possible to make mistakes at this stage, so as I've said before, I would really recommend practicing on a couple of older models until you are confident with the process. Now onto the fourth and final stage. This is the one that I would say is the trickiest, so if you have a wagon that doesn't have a canvas roof, then your quid is in because you can just skip this entirely and you've got the finished article. But for ones that do have a roof, it is really worth putting a little bit of weathering on there because the angle we tend to see most of our trains is from the top because we're standing over them. And those clean, pristine, light grey plastic roofs just don't look very good. So what we're going to do here is just add some very subtle colour variation to the top of the roof just to get rid of a little bit of that sheen and to make things look a little bit more realistic. So you can make life slightly easier for yourself if you just have a grey oil wash but I just have black and white so I mix them on a piece of kitchen towel. I would recommend putting your oil paints onto a piece of kitchen towel because there are some very fine oils in them which the, which the uh, towel will very quickly absorb and just makes the next process a little bit easier when the paints are slightly thicker and don't have that kind of layer of, of uh, thinners on them. So once that nice dark grey colour is mixed up, I like to come in with a small brush and stipple that colour onto the roof of the wagon, trying to put it in a kind of random pattern not focusing too much on one area or the other, just stippling it on there. And once that's done, I take a large flat brush, dip it in thinners, and just like with the cotton bud, scrape it over a piece of kitchen roll to turn the brush from being wet to just being damp with the thinners. If the brush is too wet, it's just going to end up making a mess. You'll kind of get a, a feel for it once you've practiced it a couple times. So you'll have to stick with me here because I know it looks like I've just painted my nice wagon up as a zebra, but we're going to fix this. The next thing I like to do, so that the roof isn't a pure grey, is to use the dark earth pigment colour and just stipple that onto the roof as well. It will stick really nicely, so only use a small amount because it, the oil will kind of grab onto it, so make sure that your brush when you're applying it doesn't have too much pigment on otherwise you'll end up with a big clump. So once we've added the weathering powder we're going to once again blend that in with the flat brush until it looks nice and smooth and then we're going to come in with our lord and saviour the cotton bud and remove most of what we've just applied. We want the effect to be nice and subtle. It shouldn't look like it's made out of cat hair. We just want a little bit of colour variation, a little bit of dirt and grime on there, and then things are going to look great. This stage really is probably the most difficult and requires the most practice. Again, it's easy to redo it. If you, if you do too much or make a mistake, just wet the cotton bud with some thinners. That will take the pigment and the oil paint right off and you'll be able to start again. As I said before, just do a little bit at a time see how it goes and practice until you're comfortable with it. It looks a little bit tricky but honestly once you've done it a few times uh, you'll be doing it in your sleep. So there we go, the finished article. The wagon is looking suitably decrepit and the roof has a little bit of colour variation on it as well and I think the model is looking a hundred times better than its plasticky finish that we began with.
Once this is all done, I would recommend putting the wagon to the side for at least a day. The oil wash takes quite a long time to dry, but it's the oil paints that are very very slow drying. So put it to the side for a while and don't handle it, otherwise you'll end up getting fingerprints on your wagon and you'll have to start again. There we are, the wagon is complete. So. As I said before, the effect is pretty subtle. There's a little bit of rust there and a little bit of dirt. And looking at them both together, they're not supposed to look like they're entirely ruined. It's just a very subtle process that can be used on lots of different kinds of wagons. And here, the weathered wagon doesn't look hugely out of place versus an unweathered locomotive. So you have a lot of versatility as to how you can use the process. And here we can see it used on a few different kinds of wagons, so uh, focusing a lot more on the rust and kind of weathering the decals on the metal open wagon and the ale wagon on the right just had a very similar process applied. And I think as a train, they look really nice. So that about sums it up for this video. Thanks very much for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was useful. I'll catch you next time.